Hi everyone and uh, Buenos Aires. My sincere apologies. I speak uh, very little uh, Spanish. I only can say Buenos Dias, Buenos Aires, Buenos Noches, Gracias. And uh, the other one that's important was uh, Baño. So, good afternoon to all of you. I've got my uh, CEO of Alapti, my partner in uh, Latin America, who is here with me. And uh, he will help me translate some of the things that I'm going to share with you today into Spanish. All of you? Sure. Okay, I've got about 200 slides. So, <laughs> I have 40 minutes. So, I'll try to be Spanish and I'll speak really, really fast, okay? So let me start by telling you a little bit about a topic that I'm talking about today and what we call a cyber plague. I'm going to tell you about how people get infected with disease and they die and how that happens on the computer as well. How you can get a disease on your computer and you can literally die today. Okay? So I'm also going to do an experiment that we have done in a very important market in the world in IT. And I'm going to show you some shocking statistics. Okay? So can I just see a show of hands? So far, how many of you can understand me? Really? Okay. Good that you are here. <laughs> <laughs> you want to translate a little bit first? Sí, empezó diciendo que tenemos eh, 200 slides para, para los siguientes 30 minutos. Entonces, vamos a tratar de irnos muy rápido. No nos crean, es muy rápido. Vamos a tratar, tratar de hacerlo en estos 30 minutos. Y la idea es nada más traducir algunos pequeños puntos claves de todo lo que diga. Y, este, y bueno, preguntó cuántas personas le entendían y levantaron la mano. Pues entonces, vamos a aprovechar de este espacio para la traducción. Ok, so let's go to my first slide. So before I start, I want to introduce to you my company. It's called EC Council. It's based in United States. And we are uh, cyber security experts. We train, for example, in the United States, people like the Pentagon. We train people like the FBI. We train people like the uh, United States Department of Defense, the Navy, the Air Force, Microsoft, Symantec. We practically train all the top 500 companies in America for cyber security. So the rest of the world as well. Everything from Japan all the way now to Mexico City, okay? So, next slide, please. Hey, TV. That's me. Yeah. Can you? <laughs> I thought it was Barack Obama. Okay, so as you can see from this next slide, you actually see that our programs have all been accepted and sanctioned by the U.S. military. The Department of Defense on your left, as you can see, the DOD stands for the Department of Defense. Next slide, please. And as you can see, perhaps if you darken the room a little bit, you'll be able to see that these are members of the Cyber Warrior Team of the U.S. Army. In the U.S. Army, there are two teams. One is called the Blue Team, and one is called the Red Team. Maybe you don't know they exist because you're more used to seeing the SWAT team, but this is the cyber SWAT. These are the people that go to war before the guys with the gun go to war. Okay, this is the way wars are being fought today. The red team does the attack. The team does the defense. Okay, we train them just like we are going to do training for all of you here in Kuri in Mexico as well. Okay, next please. And obviously, we work with universities around the world. We have partners with about 400 universities from North America to Japan to Asia to India. And we do a lot of research. And that's why I think what I'm going to say today is relevant to all the universities here today. Something for you to think about because you guys are truly important. The reason I say that is because and this is not just a marketing statement. It's because we are in education and we know that universities are the factories for workforce. Because of your hard work, you produce the workforce that goes into the Mexican industry. If you guys do well, your economy does better because you've got smart, capable, knowledgeable people. Okay? And this is the technology of cyber uh, security that we intend to bring to Mexico. Next floor is where you start. That's my part. 
Eh, ok, eso es eh, la pequeña traducción de los puntos clave que acaba de comentar aquí Sean, nuestro vicepresidente a nivel mundial. Y sobre todo lo que queremos eh, compartirles es qué tan importante es Easy Council a nivel mundial. Nosotros somos una organización internacional, eh, trabajamos alrededor del mundo con organizaciones como la ONU, como el Pentagón, por mencionarles algunos ejemplos que probablemente nos puedan ser conocidos, como el Departamento de Defensa de Estados Unidos. Y eh, eh, mencionó también cuando puso la foto del, del, de los soldados que a través de Easy Council se entrena al ejército de Estados Unidos y son principalmente los soldados que, que inician la guerra antes de que, de que de hecho se manden a los soldados a pelear con pistolas. Son las personas que van preparando el campo de batalla y que van hackeando al enemigo y sabiendo cómo, cómo está su estrategia, este, qué, qué armas tienen, etc. Entonces, eh, eso es al, a parte del alcance que tiene Easy Council. Eh, Lado, y por otro lado, mostrarles también que actualmente estamos trabajando con más de 350 universidades alrededor del mundo y eh, sobre todo mostrarles que lo importante que, que, que para nosotros es, el, el, obviamente, todos los estudiantes de las universidades, porque los estudiantes de las universidades somos lo que va a pasar en el futuro cercano a la fuerza de trabajo. Digo somos porque también todavía estoy estudiando. Exactly. I agree with you. Okay, my next slide, please. So, let me try and change and reset your mind first before I get into the content of my, of my presentation, okay? Let's talk about the taxonomy of war. Do you guys know what's war? What do you say war in... Guerra. 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 Okay. Can you think of a war that happened recently in the world? Which country fight with which country? Do you guys know? Anyone? Anyone? Alguien que sepa la guerra que está pasando actualmente a nivel eh, cibernético y qué país ataca a qué país? Alguien que tenga alguna idea que levante la mano? United States versus? Who? Who? Russia. Russia? Wow, that was World War II, is it? Can you think of something lately? Like, for example, I'll tell you, have you guys heard of Operation Desert Storm? Desert Storm was a war that U.S. fought with who? Saddam Hussein, remember? Right? So in a war, I want you to think about those questions. When did the war start? When there is a war, you know when the war has started because one country will attack the other country. You will see it on the news, right? You will understand things like who are fighting with who. For example, in this case, the U.S. has started a war against uh, Saddam Hussein, which was the country of, what country was that called? You, you, right, you're right, okay. And uh, what are the targets? They were going after military installations. They are going after chemicals, where they, they are storing the chemicals. They are going after all the army base, the air force, the radar systems. There is a specific target that they are going for to take down the country quickly. And of course, they know, you know where the war has ended. That is the time they pull the troops out of the country because the main war is over. You know who has won, you know who has lost. You know the damage. How many people die from this side? How many people die from that side? How many aeroplanes were shot down? You know the statistics. But I want to talk to you about cyber war today. So who is raging cyber war today? Which country is fighting which country? Nobody knows. Read every single report you can find on the internet. They'll tell you, we think it's China. By the way, I just want to clarify, I look like Chinese, but I'm not from China, okay? Oh, that you understand. Very good, thank you. So I just want to make sure I get out of Mexico alive. So, so they keep saying that, oh, this is, uh, you know, North Korea versus South Korea but they say, we think it looks like, but we don't know, right? When did it start? Nobody even knows when it started, but it has started already. Nobody knows when it's going to end, because it has not ended. And nobody knows what target they are going after. And the most important thing is, <coughs> in war, if I take a white piece of cloth and I wave a white cloth, what does that mean? White cloth means what? Surrender, right? You don't shoot someone with a white cloth, right? But in a cyber warfare, there are no rules. There's no white flag. You can't surrender because you don't know who is fighting with you. 
and they will come again and again and again and again like a disease and they will wipe you out before you even know it. I give you one example. The US spent almost four years developing the next generation of fighter jet. They spent over 400 billion researching the best fighter jet ever. And the plans were stolen, apparently by China. Which means, if I was a country stealing your secret, I have just saved myself four to seven years of research. I've saved all the money. I know exactly what you have done, what you've tested, what works, what doesn't work. And I build a better one than you, faster. You'd be surprised that the United States has the most number of patents recorded for research. You know what's a patent, right? They do research and they record a patent. Two years back, China has overtaken US. They are recording the most number of patents in the world. A country with far less research and development capability, far less money, far less scientific advancement, and they've overtaken the US. Can you imagine how fast that's growing? Now, what about Mexico? Where do you stand? Do you think there's a cyber war rage against you? Do you think so? Maybe you might think, I don't think so. But I'm sure you read the news, right? About the US NSA spying on all the countries, including all their friends, India, even my country, Singapore, including Mexico. And your president was very angry. So this is to show you a cyber war is something that happens behind all your backs. You don't know. Okay? You want to summarize it? Sí, claro, tengo como un minuto para resumir de todas esas palabras, pero eh, básicamente lo que estamos tratando de hacer aquí es cambiar la forma de pensar de cómo se percibe la guerra en el mundo. En el caso de una guerra física, eh, nosotros sabemos normalmente cuándo empezó la guerra, eh, quiénes, quiénes pelean contra quién, eh, cuáles son los objetivos que está buscando el enemigo, eh, cuándo la guerra ha terminado, eh, cuál es el daño que se logró a través de la guerra, e incluso hay algunas reglas, ¿no? como por ejemplo esta eh, eh, convención de Geneva y los protocolos de guerra que se han creado. Pero en el caso de una ciberguerra no sucede así. Ahí no, no sabemos quién es el oponente, no sabemos quién está atacando a quién. Y qué reglas ponía el ejemplo de una guerra física, como, como cuando se levanta una bandera blanca quiere decir me rindo, ¿no? ahí muere y ya se, se detiene la guerra. En el caso de una ciberguerra, esas reglas no existen. Está totalmente fuera de control, no sabemos quién pelea contra quién. Preguntaba si, si sabemos actualmente quién está peleando contra quién, si hemos escuchado en las noticias algunas cosas. Yo les diré desde el punto de vista de latino, por supuesto que sabemos que Estados Unidos está teniendo problemas con Brasil, que Brasil se está quejando, que Estados Unidos los han hackeado y les han estado eh, sacando información y los brasileños están sumamente enojados. Y uh, recientemente pasó también un tema con, con Peña Nieto y con Estados Unidos, también estamos en ese tipo de situaciones. Entonces, está sucediendo en todo momento y, y es probable que ni siquiera nos demos cuenta. The most important thing that as a, an independent country like Mexico is for you to remember that you can outsource a lot of things to another provider, outsource a lot of things to another country, but your security is something that you cannot outsource to another country. And this is precisely the reasons why cybersecurity is important for Mexico, okay? So let me just go on to my next slide here where you can see the experts, and these are basically the people that serve the US, and they are saying that today, the US is not prepared to handle a cyber attack which means if countries come together and want to take down US, they are not ready. Can you imagine? This, you're talking about the country that spends the most on defense. Do you know how much US spends on defense every year? They spend more than the next six biggest country in the world. So if you add France, you add Germany, you add China, you add, uh, I, I can't remember which are the other two countries, but if you add the six countries that spend on security, they cannot challenge even the United States spending. And yet they say, we are not for cyber war. We are ready for a physical war. If you want to use missiles, tanks, warship, aeroplane, yes, we can. Cyber warfare, we cannot. But here's the problem. Every physical hardware that you have, do you think that it's controlled by a software? 
That's what all of you are doing, right? And today, the US is starting to realize, and that's why they're putting all their investment, not in missiles anymore, into cyber warfare. Because why should you have a missile that is controlled by a software system, and another country can take advantage and control of that system? So what's the point? Your kinetic weapons are managed by another country. And this is obviously not surprising to you that the United States has the largest number of nuclear power plants, more than 110 active nuclear power plants. If they can take down one power plant in Japan, you know Fukushima, the problems of Fukushima, can you imagine if they take down two or three in the United States? That is what they have to learn to take control of, okay? Next slide, please. We have like 15 minutes more. Okay, minutes. good. So I go really fast, okay? So same, the United Kingdoms in Europe, the same thing they are doing is to advantage of the security of their country as well. Okay, next. So my topic here talks about a disease called the bubonic plague. Now some of you may have heard about this. Next slide, please. Do you know that more than 2,000 years ago, somewhere in 224 before Christ BC, almost 60% of Europe today was wiped out because of something called bubonic plague, which was carried by this thing called the, the mice, the rats. What is a rat? Grata. Grata, right? Grata. Grata. Rats. The rat has fleas, and the fleas is spreading disease, and people were dying. And what is the first line of defense that they know? Quarantine. If you are sick, don't come near me. That means fathers have to abandon their children. Husbands have to abandon their wives, their grandfathers, their mothers, fathers, relatives, because they are scared is a disease, and they were dying by the thousands. Don't you think today in a computer system, the same thing happens when something happens? The first thing your antivirus does is quarantine. It's not healing the problem. You are just quarantining the problem away. The second thing that happened was almost 1,500 years later, they learned to understand that besides quarantine, you need hygiene. You must wash your hands. You must wash your clothes. You must wash anything that is injury, right? All your house things you must clean if you've got the plague. Keep everything around your house clean to avoid the problem. They learned that it took them almost 1,500 years. And then only in 1796, they discovered the vaccine, which means you inject to kill the disease. It took mankind 2,000 years to stop the bubonic plague. 2,000 years. By then, I told you, 60% of Europe is wiped out. I'll give you the same example now in a computer sense. Okay, next slide, please. So, elimination is one strategy. Eradication is another strategy. Control is another strategy. Right, this is all medical. Terms. And I'm going to just, because I've got 15 minutes more, I'm just going to summarize by telling you that Obviously, to eradicate is to remove the disease completely from the face of the earth. That disease no longer exists. That's called eradication. Control is to reduce it to a level that you say, okay, maybe just 1% will get the disease so we can control it. Okay, next. Right. You can't see this clearly because it's not very bright. But this is the disease in the world of computer. Talk about mobility. Computer, your phone, right? Look at the Android. Last quarter, we recorded 17,000 new malware for the Android system. Today in the world, there is a total of more than 1 million pieces of Android application and malware. And it looks exactly like your application. So today, how many of you like Candy Crush? You sure? Right? It's okay. Everybody plays games. How many of you like? Things like, uh, like some of my colleagues like this, uh, I don't know, something versus something? Zombies contra plantas. Yeah, something like that, you know. I like that game as well, right? Candy Crush. What they do is they duplicate the application, and that application takes control of your phone, right? A lot of people will say, ah, it's okay. I use the phone for, you know, mostly my own purpose. Really? You think that this is a phone? This is not a phone, guys. This is a computer, right? This guy holds all my e communications. It holds my contacts. It holds my personal photos. It holds all my appointments. It holds all my connections. Everything is here, my mobile wallet. So if I I'd rather lose my wallet today than lose my phone. 
Not because the phone is expensive, but because my data is more expensive. So today, you heard about the launch of the new iPhone 5S. You heard about it, right? What did they say was the architecture of the 5S? 64-bit. That phone, they call it desktop class platform. What phone can perform like a desktop power? So applications today are being written to take advantage of that platform. So just imagine how powerful all these things are. So to speak, if you look at the bottom graph, like I said, everything about hacking is going up, 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 simply because people are not ready. Can I just see an honest show of hands? How many of you have a right hand? ¿Cuántos de ustedes tienen una mano derecha? Really? Only me have a right hand? You? Right hand? You have, right? Okay, good. So let's talk to me, right? Okay. How many of you have IT background and experience? IT, computer. Use computer, IT background. Tienen conocimiento de tecnología e información? You guys are groody and you don't have IT background? Really? Yes, you have IT background. How many of you here have gone through a security training? Okay, good. So the statistics is about right. Let me show you now what's shocking. Do you need to Okay, antes de, de que sigamos con más información, tenemos como, we have like 10 more minutes. Eh, entonces, nada más comentarles algo de lo que, de lo que comentó ahorita Sean, es que actualmente está sucediendo una, una, los países están preparando para la guerra y Estados Unidos, por ejemplo, ha gastado muchísimo dinero en la creación de, de, de cosas como misiles, aviones, tanques, etcétera, pero so, se están dando cuenta recientemente que lo, que lo que está sucediendo es que todo ese hardware, to, toda esa maquinaria que ellos están construyendo, no les está sirviendo de nada, porque toda esa maquinaria está conectada a computadoras. Y las computadoras no son construidas por ellos. Y son controladas por software. Y el software no, es, no está siendo desarrollado por ellos. Está siendo desarrollado por otros países. Entonces, en realidad, los países que están creando las computadoras y, y que las están eh, poniendo a andar a través del software, pueden tomar control sobre toda, toda esa artillería que tiene Estados Unidos. Entonces, están cambiando el enfoque de su defensa a, a, a cosas como misiles, tanques, etcétera, al tema de seguridad en, en tecnología de la información. Eh, por otro lado, eh, está empezando a hablar de una, de una analogía de cómo las enfermedades afectan al ser humano, cómo nos han afectado en la, eh, a la humanidad y, y hablamos, por ejemplo, de la fiebre bubónica que hace muchos años prácticamente borró la, la población en Europa. ¿Y cuánto tiempo tomó para reaccionar ante esa enfermedad y cuál fue el enfoque que le dimos los humanos a, a, a esta enfermedad. Entonces, lo primero que se hizo fue apartar a la gente, ¿no? Cuarentena, que eh, estar lejos, ¿no? Si tú estás enfermo, no te me acerques, hazte para allá. Y los apartaban. Lo siguiente que se dieron cuenta después de 1500 años fue que era importante la higiene. Entonces, empezaron a dar importancia a temas como lavarse las manos, lavarse la ropa, mantenerse limpios. Y lo, lo siguiente fue el... Eh, que, ¿Alguien se acuerda qué fue después de la... De la higiene, la vacuna.